so the popular interpretation of fluidity it's it reduces uh, fluidity to sexuality it reduces fluidity to basically mm, to uh, sphere of sexuality making it just one more uh, sexual identity one more sexual orientation and uh, feel free to as a part of the idea that we are free to define ourselves like any uh, in any way we want but it's all this um, always is reduced not always but largely reduced to sexuality you can define yourself but you have to define yourself in sphere of, of sexuality and to perceive fluidity in this way uh, reducing it to sexual flu fluidity although um, uh, Lisa Diamond uh, writing about sexual fluidity she's uh, kind of re she's reducing it on the one on one hand all as well but she also presents the uh, larger potential of, of this term precisely talking about uh, about love fluidity and um, the problem that I'm trying to to fight in this in my lectures maybe it's not necessary I'm not sure is that uh, like I told you last time uh, trying to be here with Foucault who claims that uh, we are reduced to sexuality and this is something that we can doubt this is something that we can try to modify or to see um, at least how flexible is this kind of, uh, of interpretation is and fluidity is the best way to talk about flexibility but not in a way fluidity uh, start to be uh, used recently that's just one more uh, type of sexual orientation is not exactly bisexuality not exactly pansexuality but something something different which totally in this interpretation, when you reduce it to sexuality, it tot totally loses its potential. That we can still see um, potential that we can see in uh, Lisa Diamond, who invented the, mm, the concept of uh, fluidity, sexual and love fluidity. Uh, so it reduces her potential uh, of, this, of this concept uh, to just the sphere of sexuality. The way it existed before, the concept of fluidity was... Uh, was um, introduced so uh, you can watch uh, Lisa Diamond uh, lectures about uh, sexual fluidity I'm not going to repeat that much stuff uh, she's talking about but um, you can also read uh, readings for this week those both two of them are mm, Lisa Diamond Lisa Diamond one one is a uh, paper on men, uh, female and male fluidity and the, one, the other one is book. Um, but today I'll just uh, try to put her uh, concept in a, uh, in a larger perspective of um, making the sphere of maybe overcoming sexuality, but it's too much. I will try to, or um, using the concept of fluidity, including, uh, or just making it more flexible, seeing it's, it's, it's larger, larger potential. So to start, uh, and for this, I'm going to rely mostly on uh, love, on the concept of love fluidity, showing that it's uh, trying to show it as a key, as a key concept in comparison to sexual fluidity. That the word fluidity uh, fits better to the idea of, of love than idea of uh, sexuality or gender. And uh, this will be maybe the introduction to next lecture when we will concentrate on, on love. And next week when we will talk about love. So my problem with, um, with sexuality, uh, just as I told you last time, that we are reduced to sexuality and the sphere of uh, how we define ourselves not normally reduces us to sexuality this freedom that we are free to choose who we are it's still not freedom it's still uh, will this happens in a scope of a sphere of of sexuality uh, so it might be just an, an illusion just because of that because it's uh, it's highly reduced to uh, it's highly re reduced and uh, not uh, 
large enough sphere to be to be free. So one of the problems with sexuality is that as some researchers researchers point, um, for example, Iris Young, is that sexuality is erected penis. So it's phallocentric. It's initially structurally about the erected penis, about the phallus. And for this reason, uh, intercourse, because it's about penis, uh, intercourse is a true self, uh, true uh, sexual act. And the problem with, with the sexuality being uh, phallocentric, centrated on the penis as its center, as it's, it, this, it, because it's hi uh, hierarchical, right? Um, whatever we talk, uh, wherever we talk about uh, anything else within the biological or natural sphere or cultural sphere, it's still seen as a kind of modification of, uh, of uh, polycentric worldview. It includes the word, it, to define it, we might include the word, word penis and we will, um, some kind of deviation from it, and we will actually come to the standard traditional definitions of, of those uh, phenomena. And inter, because it's about penis, intercourse is considered to be true, uh, true sex act. So it's something about penis, right? And it initially the sphere of sexuality because of this is uh, hierarchical and is um, oppressive. Um, for example, if you want to, to try to do it, <laughs> if you want to see if, if I'm correct, we can try to give a phallocentric definitions to, uh, to those terms. Phallocentric definitions that defining each of those phenomena like men, women, vagina, heterosexual intercourse, homosexual intercourse, all that you can see. Uh, if you want, you can provide uh, the definition of those words, including word penis, and I'm guaranteeing you that the way you will define those things will be traditional definition of how they are defined, precisely psychoanalytical uh, interpretation. Do you want to start? Like, how would we, okay, the man is the, the easiest way to define because it it's mostly about men. How would you define a man, including the word penis in it? It's very easy just to start. It will get harder. We are defining man, right? Yes. Uh, it's a human having a penis. <laughs> Correct. Uh, and a woman? Try to guess. Just the opposite. Woman without a penis. No penis. Or human yeah, without penis. Human without penis. And vagina is the the way it's still perceived yeah it's the absence of penis so it's like an empty space for that supposed to be there's supposed to be something but there's actually nothing yeah for, for some reason we vagina is not defined i mean we're trying to do it now but uh, it's still largely defined as either modified penis a tiny tiny penis <laughs> or as the absence of penis the empty space and it's Freudian definition of, of vagina, of the way we will talk later about penis and how girls define themselves. That you're just really surprised to find that nothing is there. And this, the way they are, how surprised they are actually defines their... Um, May I add a word about this? Yes. So as far as I remember from the current lecture, we know that uh, up to the 18th or 17th century, the uh, women reproductive organs were perceived as the reversed male organs, right? And that goes from this phallocentric definition as well. Yeah, uh, actually, there are many ways to def to to define it. Um, and if you come back to ancient Greece, it wouldn't be actually, even though we we see all those penises and uh, it's patriarchal because women are reducing rights. I mean, we can impose this perspective on ancient Greece, but we can also Mm, see that uh, human being in in ancient Greece were like half male, half female. So it was female part of each, and male part of each. It's much more complicated than this. But anyway, and there are uh, 
many more more complicated definitions not only that exists now but that we can find in uh, history but for now uh, the the experiment is if we concentrate on this followed centric definition we will actually see that the way we will define all of those phenomena we will see that um, they are familiar to us so it's kind of true also we have to keep in mind and it's kind of important that um, followed centric interpretation can be seen in um, I mean, for me, uh, there is a way to perceive it as uh, it's, it's not that something is totally wrong with it. And this is the way that it's not about uh, manpower in the way it's normally perceived, but it's also the, the alternative interpretation is uh, sensitivity. This penis re might represent the human being as such because it's a sensitive part of the body and it might be seen as a kind of a baby because it's something sensitive. So it's a symbol of, uh, in ancient culture, it's a symbol of human being because it's sensitive and consists of, of mucus and uh, vulnerable as a human being in comparison to uh, other animals. But we are not talking about this perspective. This is a perspective which is okay, but for to today we need um, this bad perspective that is follow centric in a in a way uh, feminists uh, define it and will try to fight it uh, so let's proceed how would you define a heterosexual intercourse which is for um, for the uh, sphere of sexuality is a key act it, including the word to include the word penis in it yummy i would say penetration with penis or something like that Yes, it's a penetration, but it's also satisfaction because we define sexual intercourse initially. The way it's defined is that um, there's supposed to be ejaculation. There's supposed to be man orgasm. And uh, for female, it's not a necessary thing. And this is how we see that it's, uh, uh, it's phallocentric. And also, we can also question why we're supposed to have orgasm. Like for, you know, it's not necessary, right? But Mm. Within, uh, within phallocentric sexuality, it is necessary and is the center how the intercourse uh, is defined. And what is the problem with homosexual intercourse, including lesbian intercourse? You can include the word penis even in, in this. You need two steps. So, as you have said, there are two types. Maybe in, in some cases the penis is overused, and in other cases, used. Uh, yeah, that's good definition. But it's, uh, I mean, this already next step, the third step, negation. And we'll talk about negation of sexuality as the way to overcome sexuality, with a, which I think uh, fails. But for now, we, we can stay on with the idea that um, if heterosexual intercourse is the center of, of sexuality, then uh, homosexual intercourse is just a um, modification. So we have both roles, like men and women are defined within the sphere of sexuality. And they are se sexed beings, right? They are defined, those creatures who are defined relying on phallocentric um, heterosexual interpretation. And in homosexual intercourse, we still have, um, it's still about the, those sex beings, but the like men and women who are defined in relation to penis, just some roles are switched, right? It's still heterosexual, but uh, transformed. Uh, it's not necessary to agree with, with me here, but basically the initial interpretation was, was this interpretation. Now, how would, how would we define love? We already know from the last lecture how love is defined talking about penis. You don't want to do that. Okay. I don't want to do that either, but I'll do it for you as a first step. So love is defined as a, um, as sublimated desire to satisfy penis, as sublimated sexual desire. Right, which is because it's a sexual desire of a man, because sexual uh, sphere is phallocentric. So love is a modification of this initial desire to satisfy the desire of penis phallocentric desire. Now, interesting thing: how would we define child? 
And I think I told you already, according to Freud, what the child is. Olga, yes. Uh, maybe it's kind of a, a product um, as a result of uh, penetration, um, penis penetration. <laughs> yeah, it's first of all, it's, um, yes, it's a product of, of this. So we start, remember the, the line that I'll show you today again, that we start with intercourse, which, which defined as a satisfaction of a penis. And um, if this is a start, then the baby after the pregnancy, uh, the baby that appears is just the result of, of the intercourse of a penis penetration. But it's not only that, it's uh, in Freud uh, and the way we define child in everyday life that it's not um, uh, the scope of sexuality. Uh, they are so just sex is something children are not allowed to know. It's something not for them. It's uh, they are not they are too young, right? And in Freud, uh, childhood sexuality is perverted. Um, okay, in a good Freud, all the sexuality is perverted. But still, uh, he starts the starting point and as normal male um, sexuality, and the child deviates is perverted, perverted creature in relation to male. Uh, adult ma male sexuality because even though a child has sexuality according to Freud it can't satisfy uh, its, um, this desire just physically so this is how child childhood is basically defined as not yet male with erected penis as, as something perverted and is getting there get into developing into a normal uh, adult uh, child and it's a child in psychoanalysis uh, Mm. The, de the psychosexual development is male development. Uh, female development is considered in Freud, but it's a deviation from the from the normal pattern, male pattern. Now, how would you define the breastfeeding? Getting more interesting. And maternal care, you can add. You don't want to do it, okay. So uh, in psychoanalysis, again, breastfeeding would be defined as taking care and other uh, ways of, of, of taking care would be defined as the substitution for female desire of a penis. And it, it's, it was really, even though it looks like weird, it really was defined that way and precisely uh, to that we arrived to that definition because uh, it was sexuality is uh, phallocentric to this weird definition that uh, breastfeeding which is uh, also act which is needed for reproduction I know it's not necessary now but sex is also not necessary now um, uh, it's weird but still within the scope this is the conclusion to which uh, we arrived and my claim is that um, what we do now, like what people do now, uh, theories do now, researchers uh, of sexuality, they try to get rid of, of phallocentric uh, understanding of, of sexuality. And, but the problem is that um, because, you know, because we are all equal and um, we don't want to be repressed and this is repressive if there is a, palace at the center it's quite repressive structure but my claim is that maybe um, maybe sexuality is not the scope of sexuality where we try to find our freedom maybe it's not flexible enough uh, because of this initial structure to um, to for equality for redefining who we are and um I'm not telling you have to do it, but for me, what is interesting for me is just to see the perspective of of other way of uh, defining who we are by overcoming sexuality, but not overcoming the, the natural <clears throat> the natural element. So not uh, overcoming the sphere of reproduction, like mm, not going somewhere in metaphysical level, but actually staying at the, at the very, very material level of our bodies and bodies and still preserving reproduction, but uh, not in terms of, of uh, sexuality. And this is what uh, Lisa Diamond um, 
including her, uh, might help us help us to do. And, and there were there were people who also doubted this fear of sexuality and were suggested some ways how to overcome it. And some of you may already know um, Monique Wittig. She is one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite uh, researchers. Uh, she is claimed to be radical feminist, but I'm not sure if we can call her feminist because of what she. Um, what she claimed, she claimed that a uh, woman is a category that only exists within the heterosexual system of thought. So woman is uh, someone who defined as, uh, as a being who is different from male, uh, according to her. In, in, uh, normally in uh, Western cultures, female is defined as a deviation, as different from male, as some modification of a basic male partner. And what she tries to fight with is heterosexual mind and uh, for her concept of the phenomena of woman or the definition of certain creature as a woman as is definition that exists within the heterosexual system of thought and which is basically uh, true we can uh, the word so sexual beings are sex beings right they are divided into two or two sexes and word um, sexual sex means to divide to cut in half so do um, you, you can see it, it presupposes two um, two sexes not genders because genders are already deviation from this as you know um, but still at the basic stru structure what it deviates is those two um two uh, opposites one of which in western culture were was defined as passive and another one is active so the passive the active part is men the passive part the opposite to it is is woman so for vitik i like her a lot because he she is radical in suggestion suggest suggestion suggesting that we um, it's not the emancipation of woman right that we have to uh, pursue but the very doubt of creatures uh, labeled uh, woman because no matter how you uh, how you would uh, try to emancipate them, they're still a um, part of this heterosexual mind and which presupposes the reduction of them to passive opposites of, of male. And uh, she even compares it with the concept of slavery and claiming that uh, we can't redeem slave, like we wouldn't uh, try to to claim that to emancipate slaves, still preserving the idea of slavery, like claiming that now you are slaves, but you are kind of free to go. That would be a, a weird thing. So we're not doing it. We're trying to overcome it, the overcome idea of slavery on of slaves as such, not to preserve idea of slavery and just uh, claim that slaves should be free uh, within the scope of um, within the scope of, of apparatus of slavery. Um, so something wrong with, with the concept of woman because she's perceived as a different and man is not different, white man is not different, but uh, the rest, the slaves, uh, the blacks, women are considered different in relation to this man. So it, it, this might be too radical to get rid of a concept of, of woman and to compare it with the concept of slave, but Still, it's very interesting and it shows that um, different possibilities are not staying within the concept of sexuality, but with uh, overcoming it. Actually, for Monique Vitek, what she's trying to fight is the heterosexual mind. And she is okay with sex sexuality because heterosexual is based on the all of this distinction into male and female as two opposites where male is active, female is passive. But for me, I think we have we can make one step further and just um, say that it's not something wrong with uh, heterosexuality, but sexuality as such, because sexuality presupposes this division and it is already uh, dual. Uh, it's every sexuality is heterosexuality, or at least if it's a deviation, what psychoanalysis tries to do, it still kind of preserves the basic point it's trying to uh, to to deviate, which might be the only way. To, to survive, to preserve it and deviate it, but still um, it's interesting to find out if there are any other 
mm, any other possibilities. So for Monique Wittig, a concept of a woman is a way to maintain heterosexuality uh, as the center, this heterosexual mind as the, um, as the way we, we perceive ourselves. So what she suggests is to renounce a woman as such, to get rid of the notion of a woman and um, uh, to, uh, find, to find, to create a new concept. And uh, she also claimed she was one of the um, important uh, critics of psychoanalysis, claiming that psych uh, Freud and Lacan, they are, um, uh, they are popularizing the heterosexual mind because the position of a psychoanalyst is a position of one who uh, is allowed to interpret what is going on and the position who, uh, of a person who is in charge of interpretation who you are. And uh, this is how through this apparatus, the idea that sexuality is uh, something that defines ourselves, and sexuality is at the basis is heterosexuality. Um, so this makes the psychoanalysis the promoter of a heterosexual mind. Even though we're trying to mod modify it, even though there is a feminist psychoanalysis, but still at the basis, um, there is this uh, heterosexual mind propaganda. And um, Wittig really hates uh, psychoanalysis a lot. And it's hard, hard not to agree with her. She, she hates it that, that much that it's hard not to agree with her. So um, the second part of this quote is that lesbian are not, not women. This means that she suggests a uh, term lesbian uh, as a uh, substitution for term woman, that is, because according to her, term woman preserves heterosexuality, but the term les le lesbian overthrows it because it's two, not woman, but uh, two lesbians, right? There is no man. But you see the problem with this, um, with this too, that it's still a part of, as we, we defined homosexual intercourse already, and we managed to use the word penis, so I managed to use the word penis, maybe you're not that perverted enough. And uh, we can criticize it that uh, what is wrong, you think, with the concept of a lesbian as a substitution of a woman, why it doesn't help if we get rid of woman and just keep lesbian why it won't help or why it will help. Yes, Vladislav. The obvious reason for this is that uh, the term lesbian uh, already has a lot of uh, connotations and in this uh, heterosexual binarity, these connotations uh, my, may be negative as, as something perverted, as we said. Yeah, that's true, but it's too complicated. I need a simple, simple, normal answer. It's not too clever. Who else raised the hand? Yami. I, I didn't really hear the question. Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, Daria, uh, Diana, I think also, right? And the question is, um, Monique Wittig uh, suggests to substitute, to get rid of a concept of women, but to keep a concept of lesbians. And this is, uh, for her, this is the way how to emancipate the sphere of sexuality. What do you think is the problem with that? How is lesbian not better than the concept of lesbian is not better than the concept of woman? Or you think it's a great idea that we get rid of Elisabetta, right? I mean, uh, maybe the problem is that uh, it's a kind of, um, how do you call it? Uh, it's a kind of separatism and it, and it, it, it doesn't, uh, it is not s universal enough and problematizes and excludes uh, many women if we, if we talk about lesbians. 
Probably. Yeah, I didn't talk. I didn't think about uh, that actually, and I think you should write about it, like include in discuss uh, discussion of separatism this uh, this criticism. Yeah, I didn't think. I mean, I th I thought about separatism, lesbian separatism, in this way, but not about BT. Uh, it's true. I mean, what what we're going to do with uh, those who define themselves as 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 a woman? Will we see them as uh, deficient creatures? So by and in this way, by still keeping the heterosexual mind, it's not emancipation of all the people. But uh, is there any any else who wanted to talk? Okay, no. So uh, um, sorry, can I? I yes. I raised my hand and uh, okay. Very. Um, I wanted to say that probably the problem, as you said, uh, I think is what you mean is that. Uh, this concept still exists in in the in the discourse of uh, of patriarchy of uh, heterosexuality. So when we when we when we say lesbian, we can we still define uh, this word somehow in this uh, according to this discourse. So we we say it's a women attracted to only women, um, roughly. So yeah, uh, I think another problem is that when we get rid of the concept of a woman uh, I, and I think it is what's happening uh, already in this queer discourse is that um, any person even even men could define themselves as lesbians if they are attracted to women uh, and if uh, I mean male males uh, yeah so so in this case um, I think what we we take me means is also um, somehow blurred and uh, uh, becomes something that she didn't want it to become. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean it's very interesting that uh, lesbianism can be seen as a way to maintain actually the heterosexual mind and uh, repression. And because anyone can claim that they they are lesbians because they like uh, females, that's interesting. Uh, thank you. So the the thing is that lesbians, there is no way to define uh, lesbians except for if you talk about two women. So lesbians are two women. It's still even if you don't talk about women anymore, uh, two women. If you don't talk about women anymore, the concept of lesbianism, if you preserve it, it's still. Mm, suggests that those uh, people who uh, participate in in lesbian is in, le in in lesbian relationship are, are women so it's it for to, to def it is defined within the heterosexuality right and this is what uh, butler judy butler criticism is that she is referring to many critic claiming that there is no clear way to read this description of female homosexuality lesbianism and not uh, that it's not about the sexual desire for for a woman so uh, that it's uh, it's not some modification of uh, initial heterosexuality we still mm, it's still a way it's still a heterosexuality it's modified version of heterosexuality so it preserves this initial heterosexual mind that many critic is trying to fight mm, at the basis uh, just uh, masking masking it and it's not the best maybe the way out but the idea to doubt the concept that are like crucial concept uh, because woman is uh, how you the first thing how you define either you are a man or or a woman uh, when you are, when you are born and throughout all of your lives in in, in our culture and to to doubt it i think it's uh, it's great uh, great idea so uh, the problem with Freud that uh, Manik Wittig criticizes is that all the de all the definition that uh, we gave are actually can be seen as uh, Freudian definition because he still preserves this idea. He uh, claims that there is only for, for him a male um, psychosexual development is the is the main pattern 
is central and uh, Lacan even analyzing Freud claims that it's only uh, male libido in psychoanalysis the other kinds of uh, libido are just uh, female libido are just the deviation from the male centered understanding and uh, Jonathan Katz uh, and it's not only him believe that there are two Freuds the uh, rebel Freud that questions normal sexuality and this is the part of Freudian perspective and Lacanian perspective that contemporary psychoanalysis tries to develop as you see in, in, in Alenka Zupancic uh, work for example that uh, it's using this good Freud as a way to doubt uh, normal sexuality but there is also conformist Freud at the basis of it that is uh, normal uh, sexuality prime mover so he still, because the problem is if you talk about deviation of normality, you still uh, have to talk about normality. You have to define what is normal. So, and still the stance of contemporary psychoanalysis that it, uh, it uh, preserves idea of sexuality as something that uh, define, uh, define who is a uh, human being, the scope of, of what is human. For example, uh, Freud claimed that sexual instinct is probably uh, strongly, more strongly developed in men than in most of the higher animals. And even though we tried now, we, now we try to to see the sexuality as um, as negated sexuality, as sexuality that is not always is not there. Right, this weird psychoanalytical movement of sort that I really like, by the way, but still. Uh, that sexuality is not sexuality. Sexuality is the point where it is absent. It's the point where we mm, question in ourselves or the weird statement of Lacan that no sexual relationship exists. Even though, and this is central for, sexuality is central for human being, but there is no sexuality. And this is like the void that we are constituted around. This is because for... Uh, for sexuality, if we want to preserve sexuality at the center of defining human beings, and we don't want to preserve this norm normativity, male-centrated, coitus-centrated, and heterosexual, uh, if we want to get rid of it, but still preserve sexuality, we can only use negative terms. So sexuality is not sexuality. Yeah, we can only, um, is no, no, positive, no positive terms, only the, the negation which the the notion of, uh, of Freud sexuality would be in this way that sexuality is not sexuality and it's the the point where we can uh, arrive staying within the scope of, of sexuality because it's initially holocentric it's initially presupposes this normativity that we are now trying to fight and there is no way to transcend it well, there might be a way, but it's very hard to transcend it because all the, all our um, uh, ways that uh, are suggested how to transcend this uh, initial sexual normativity, polycentric and uh, heterosexual, still presupposes what it deviates from, still presupposes as the basis what it deviates from and kind of reaffirms the initial norm normativity by de uh, deviating from it like the trying to deviate the idea of a woman by substituting it with uh, the concept of lesbian still preserves the idea of woman and woman is the um, a secondary creature within this uh, within this structure so it's staying within a sphere of sexuality is very hard to preserve uh, to um, to reach uh, emancipation because it's not it was a part of something initially appeared as the part of uh, of as the main uh, the main way how to oppress uh, people precisely women and it's very hard staying within this uh, sphere to uh, reach emancipation uh, so Freud they promise you that uh, the way you defined those concepts, um, the way we define those concepts uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, by including the word penis, it would be 
uh, traditional, if you include the word penis in those uh, concept that would be the traditional definition of all of those concepts, precisely uh, psychoanalytical definition of those concepts. And here we see how, um, how Freud defines the uh, psychosexual development of, uh, of girls, females. And he claims that, uh, I think, after noticing it in his own grandchildren, or children, or both, he claims that they only notice they at once notice the difference uh, when they see uh, the penis uh, it, it it must be admitted its significance too so they right away they understand how how significant it is and they feel seriously wronged uh, often declare that they want to have something like it too and fall a victim to envy or uh, envy of penis which will uh, leave uh, in a redactable trace on their development and the formation of their character. So for Freud, he defined the whole development of a female of girl through this event. And he claims that, um, which is obviously ridiculous, that there is a point in our lives where we notice that we don't have penis and someone else have penis and we right away we understand how, um, how important it is. And uh, this trauma, the way we feel that something is wrong with us because we don't have that thing, it's defined uh, who we are. And it's, this is how he defines the woman. Uh, so, mm, yeah, this is the, the way psychosexual development of a girl defined. This is the main concept for the uh, psychosexual development of a girl. And it's, it's included, right, in the mm, definition of what is girl. So this is who girl is. She, the, the creature there is wrong or feels wrong because she don't have this, this thing. And later, according to Freud, the uh, woman bec becomes a woman, established as a woman when she uh, substitutes. So she, later she desires to have a penis to, uh, and men have a penis. So she desires men because she don't have one. And uh, she, accompli she accomplishes as a woman when she gives birth to a child because this is the substitution uh, of a penis that she wanted. So child, um, each of you is uh, of living be with the whole history, just someone's substitution of a desire of penis because uh, they felt wronged and uh, wanted to have a substitution. And uh, so pregnancy and uh, taking care of a child, according to Freud, is just a modified version, is because uh, the is modified version for uh, desire of penis, because woman wants to have penis on her own and she has baby instead. And the woman likes, uh, loves baby and caresses baby because uh, this, uh, the love is uh, sublimated, modified, or actually version of, uh, of the sexual desire for penis. And um, yeah, so we can see that everything is defined as a emanation, a phallocentric emanation. It's, it's penis at the center, uh, deliberately put there and everything else defines through the emanation to it, like through modified uh, version of uh, through the role of penis that it plays in it. Even those who don't have penis and even those who like, um, yeah, it's, it's very hard to, to include <laughs> penis as something, but still uh, people do manage to do it and to define uh, some substantial events like uh, giving birth and taking care of a baby as the, still through the phallocentric uh, perspective. And um, Freud was not the uh, the one who initiated it. It was basically the more or less uh, his more or less tradition to define uh, to define a human being as uh, uh, in relation to 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 penis. For example, uh, Schopenhauer, and uh, we know that Freud claims that. Plato did the same thing. Schopenhauer defined human ma male man. Uh, he claimed is incarnation of uh, incarnation of 
of sexual instinct, not female. Female, uh, if we claim that a human being is something that is defined by uh, extended uh, sexual instinct, this is about male. This is how we claim that the main main human is male because he's active. And uh, if sexuality defines the him uh, human, uh, then man is the main main human because he's active participant in, in sexuality and female is uh, defined as sexual, as object for sexuality. As in one of the way to define woman is object of satisfaction for, for male in traditional societies. So this is the, the trap of a sphere of sexuality. It's hard to emancipate woman staying in, inside of it because woman is defined through the sexuality as a passive, as a secondary as a deviation. So there are a couple of interesting ideas and we'll come, we'll come to Lisa Diamond soon through this. Um, so the problem is that uh, in Western culture that defines itself through the concept of sexuality that still preserves this concept of sexuality. The main uh, couple is couple male-female within all the scope of reproduction that we, we were talking about it uh, because the central act is intercourse and in relation to the intercourse, um, the role of sex is, uh, humans are defined as male and female in relation to intercourse because in intercourse, it is claimed that ma male has central role, female is a um, secondary role. So the male, main pair is a male-female, the main, uh, event in reproduction is intercourse and uh, this is the main main couple historically but there there are mm, there are different interesting uh, suggestions how to overcome this uh, for example to claim that uh, to claim that it's uh, the the other pair crucial pair within the human reproduction is possible uh, is a mother child um, mother child bond mother child pair because the the other one the mother child uh, bond is seen as the secondary as we saw with freud in relation to to male female because for uh, mother child relationship are seen as a deviation from initial uh, male female um, bond and um, the love that mother feels to a child, the breastfeeding of a child is seen as a um, deviation of her desire for, for a male and child is a substitution of a male, but we can see it in a different way. We can see fe male, female as a substitution of woman, child or mother, child. Actually, there is no mother, there is no woman here. There's only mother, mothers are, we can claim uh, not woman, but we'll that there might be same trap as a Monique Wittig trap. Uh, but it's only this trap uh, appears if we conceive uh, mother as a, whatever, so let's just not <laughs> go in there for, for, for this uh, for now. So uh, there were attempts to claim that, uh, to claim this couple as, um, as a main couple, as alpha couple. For example, um, Elizabeth Fisher, uh, in her book, it's quite old book, uh, Woman Creation, claims that um, it is this couple, the um, couple of mother-child can be seen as central, as alpha couple. It's book Woman Creation, quite old, 1979, but uh, still ra radical enough, but not uh, very radical, but not radical enough. She, and she claims that mm, within the Western repressive society, uh, sexuality was reduced to the couple of male, female. Sexuality was the uh, state within the scope of male, uh, female bond and uh, mother child relationship were just uh, extended uh, substitution version, some modified version of this initial uh, relationship. And she claimed that uh, what she tries to do is emancipate a mother-child sexuality. It's not only her, but it's one of the attempts. And she claims that uh, women, 
where restrict this sexual gratification to uh, heterosexual intercourse and uh, but women and children may play the price of lesser guardian relationship so she what she tries to do is still um, she's still within the scope of sexuality but she's trying to show that uh, female that mother child relationship are also sexual not also sexual but initially sexual so it's still a physical contact is still reward, rewarding rewarding physical contact and uh, uh, intercourse male female intercourse can be seen as a substitution but the problem is that it's you still um, the concept of sex is defined as uh, based on intercourse as based on male female couple and even male and females uh, human being are defined on those because uh, sexuality is uh, central and to, to make another movement and say that uh, woman and child relationship are also sexual is still to preserve the Freudian structure that saw um, this also. It's still this also, the sexuality is, feels like it's stolen, that it's not necessary belong to, not something that not belong, just reappropriated to child and, um, and uh, mother. So the option is just to leave preserve a child my one of the options is to preserve a child and uh, to preserve a child and uh, mother bone as as a central but to claim that it's not the sphere of of sexuality uh, anymore and it's uh, it is possible to do it and it's very interesting how it's uh, and as we saw last time uh, the bond of a child and a mother and although is um, although it's physical and although it presupposes physical contact with a child i know breastfeeding is not necessary but as i claim the sexual relationship are now not necessary as well and humans can perfectly survive once they are born and uh, once they are raised uh, they mm, there are ways to survive without both breastfeeding and without uh, sex you don't need it for survival, but it's still mm, two of them are a part of uh, of our reproduction. So uh, there are interesting connotations between uh, breastfeeding and and sexual act. Uh, for example, this is the interesting research that was made uh, by uh, Levin. So uh, he asked some of the females. Uh, what they feel while they are breastfeeding and uh, we, more people have sex than breastfeed right and this is how we have more knowledge about a sexual uh, sexuality than about breastfeeding because we don't normally even though those are quite similar acts uh, i'll try to show you uh, we turn to within our culture we turn to uh, tend to think about them in a different way even though both presuppose penetration and both are uh, necessary reproductive acts, acts at the basis, not now, but not in factually, but uh, uh, still we are here because they happened to in the history. They were invented by evolution. They appeared in evolution. And uh, even though they are similar because it's context of uh, but bodies with pres that presuppose penetration, that presuppose exchange of liquids, and uh, similar sensation because uh, both uh, nipples and genitals are mucus and have nerve uh, sensitive nerve cells, so it's it's uh, quite similar uh, thing. But we still talk about those two phenomena in a different way. For example, you saw in Alien Kazupanchic and you know how the breastfeeding Mother Mary is uh, perceived in uh, Christianity, that uh, it's not sexual act, mm, that it's, uh, and that it's a pure uh, moral act, uh, that we, we can even see the picture of it in, in church. And sexual uh, is something sinful. The intercourse is something sin sinful. So uh, precisely because maybe one of the reasons that uh, men didn't, don't, don't actually know how it feels, right? And they can't, um, they can't compare. But uh, 
because both are physiologically uh, process of breastfeeding physiologically is similar to um, sexual intercourse. Uh, there are interesting research claims that uh, between 33% and 50% of respond, uh, respondents breastfeeding mother claim that uh, breastfeeding is sexually pl uh, pleasurable, but when you ask them if they feel uh, some pleasurable contraction in the uh, uterine region, 71% will answer. And the problem is why do we claim that it's sexual? If it's similar, we claim that it's sexual, but it's not sexual. It just, we claim that it's sexual because the, uh, we, before breastfeeding, normally have the experience of sexual, of, uh, sexual intercourse. And we claim that it's, uh, breastfeeding might be in a way uh, similar to it. But just because it comes, it's, it doesn't mean that it's uh, that it's uh, sexual, right? Because um, we can define it as self-sufficient act. So, for example, why not to claim that it turned out that intercourse feels like breastfeeding? Like breastfeeding is first, and uh, and intercourse feels like a breastfeeding. We still by perceive even this question in this uh, paper of um, Levin. It still presupposes still presupposes that uh, sexuality intercourse is first and breastfeeding is modification it's like sex feels like sex it's also sexual uh, but why uh, if if someone would happen so that someone will feel the breast will have experience of breastfeeding initial without intercourse which is now possible then for them the sex will feel like a breastfeeding right within this new um the act of breastfeed, the act of intercourse for them will feel, they will say that, wow, well, it feels more or less like breastfeeding. That's weird. Uh, so this possible, this is a possible interpretation. We just so got used to sexuality as initial act, even though both acts are, are um, unnecessary for reproduction, uh, that we tend to reduce everything to scope of sexuality. There was even an... Uh, accident uh, i don't remember the name uh, maybe i'll find for it for next time but uh, in america when the uh, all all the fuss started about the pedophilia and and stuff uh, pedophiles the woman who started to breastfeed a child uh, called in some medical service or somewhere else to authorities and claimed that she feels a sexual sexual arousal weird sexual arousal when she's breastfeeding the child. She has just wanted to check if it's normal. Yes, she was very naive calling and authorities and claiming that feels, she feels so, because normally we don't recognize it. Even if we were breastfeed, we feel this uh, uterine uh, contractions. We don't, uh, we tr try to like, uh, we're scared to admit that it feels uh, a similar way, although the mechanism, physiological mechanism is really similar. Uh, to that uh, promotes breastfeeding and intercourse. The feelings are uh, similar, but we don't admit it to ourselves because it's inappropriate. Just women are quiet about it. <laughs> and because it's weird, they, they might not ad be admitted even to, to themselves. So this woman were called to authorities claiming if it's okay, and she was, she was put in jail, separated from her child uh, because she was considered perverted. Right, uh, be, and this is something that we to, don't, don't talk about in our culture. We to, lo, talk about lo, a lot about sex, sexual feeling, but about this, uh, we all are. Mm, we don't even know. Maybe for some of you, it's now a revelation that this act feels in in a way uh, similar. There is also a um, couple of interesting other researchers uh, that. Uh, show comparison of, of both acts. Um, claiming that, for example, Dale, Dale Glabach claims that um, see this similarity of uh, physical acts, both physical acts, one the coitus that uh, produces life and the other one is uh, breastfeeding that preserves life, both presuppose one life creating, another life sustaining, and um, both presuppose the penetration uh, and um, what we can call ejaculation or uh, breastfeeding 
so exchange of, of fluids that needed for promotion, preserving of life. Um, uh, but and this ex this can be explained with this within the evolutionary perspective that uh, in evolution evolution doesn't create is uh, quite uh, economical process it doesn't create some radically new uh, elements so it uh, there are lots of similarities that uh, processes that work in the same way so the way so nature promotes or secures uh, reproduction and promotion uh, creation and promotion of life actually includes those two similar um, two, the similar sensation the muc we have mucus we have nerve cells and we have the, the stimulation of those nerve cells both in genitalia and in nipples and we know that uh, stimulation of nipples is uh, not rarely included in uh, intercourse as a part of the intercourse. And somehow we think that the breastfeeding of a child, if it's a child and not uh, your partner, it feels the different way, but it, it doesn't feel the different way. I mean, we can perceive it and uh, try to uh, not to admit it, but it's the idea is uh, the process is uh, similar. So we can conceive this couple. It's possible to conceive this couple as a, as a main one and it's interesting consequences. So we can come back again to the continuum of, of reproduction, claiming that uh, initially the intercourse was the, uh, the intercourse was the basic one, right? Which from here, this is how we defined, if you based on this, if you see this as a central, here we define as female and male and because independence of uh, what role we play in the reproduction and if you start from here everything else seen as a deviation as the or as a result pregnancy is seen as a result of this because this is the starting point the traditional starting point and birth of course as well as the result of activity of penis and intercourse which is intercourse is a, a presupposes man orgasm this is the event that presupposes male orgas organ orgasm no matter how you modify it that it doesn't presuppose but initially it did and the nourishment of a child or part of which is breastfeeding or just physical care it's uh, still uh, we see this we recognize it as a second uh, act that needed for reproduction of life physical act same as sex is uh, physical right it's uh, when two bodies are close together but somehow with, because we start from here from intercourse we see this one as a secondary and if we if we recognize that sensation are same that principle is same and there is not less needed than intercourse for uh, for survival or, or for reproduction we still see it as analogy of uh, intercourse those sensation as an uh, analogy of inter intercourse of sexual uh, intercourse and some modified form form of it but if you start from here it's possible to start from here because both are necessary just it won't be a concept of um, it won't be sphere of sexuality anymore if you start from here just in this in experiments the couple would be male uh, the couple would be not male and female but mother and a child without actually gender because gender is here right uh, which is weird but still and uh, this nourishment, by the way, it's not necessary only the breastfeeding. You don't need a special type of genitalia to take care of a baby, right? To physically uh, caress the baby or mm, raise the baby. Uh, yes, you need it for breastfeeding, but there are other types of necessary care that um, you can participate in. It's not, uh, it's not about uh, so the vision here of the uh, roles is not similar as if you start from intercourse. And uh, we can claim that female here is central, but there is no female. There is, uh, there is no female because female starts from the intercourse, which is weird because we got used to think about pregnant woman. If it's, the creature is pregnant, it's first it's woman, then it's pregnant because we start from intercourse. But there is, if we uh, opt for alternative starting point, is things are things are different. And now let's talk about uh, Lisa Diamond. So she actually we coming from a different way, taking different route 
to the concept of sexual fluidity or love uh, fluidity. She claims uh, she relies on uh, she relies on different uh, uh, some some research and uh, suggests in her book I think it's chapter seven. Uh, she suggests that uh, emotion associated with reproductive pair bonding in a common sense, the emotions of romantic love uh, originally evolved not as a context of mating, but in the content of uh, infant caregiver attachment. And it changed, uh, changes actually a lot. Uh, so the question she starts with, uh, sorry, this, the question, uh, the question she starts first, her book, uh, why she started to wonder about uh, things that she wondered about is uh, because uh, some female, uh, when sometimes uh, female who define themselves as uh, heterosexual, at certain point of time, they might fall in love with their friend, mm, female friends, be very close to them and um, mm, have uh, sexual relationship with them. So it doesn't fall exactly in an idea of bisexuality, it's not exactly pansexuality, it's just, um, and it's not that they were wrong all the time about their heterosexual uh, orientation, it just happens so that they switch, that they change the uh, sexual orientation and fall in love with, with women. And it was the idea of falling in love first initially uh, that um, make them recognize that, uh, uh, make them feel uh, physical um, arousal and uh, need for physical proximity with the, with the woman. So she claimed that it might be the love uh, might be not, uh, not about sex. So it's not the, uh, about sexual drive. It might be about something else. So it's in, in within the structure where we see the, um, uh, infant caregiver or mother-child attachment as basic and the love as modification of this desire, it actually makes more sense uh, because the sexual orientation and sexes, they exist only within the scope of, of uh, sexuality. And if we start and we normally see love as a deviation, as a sublimation of this basic sphere of sexuality, but there is other way around. If we see, um, the way she claims, uh, if we see love first, right, and then a physical element as added to it, not added to it, but maybe some physical proximity added to it, because love is a physical drive, and it's drive to stay close to someone, like infant who is uh, attaches to a caregiver, uh, with uh, their desire to um, stay close to them, physically close to them, be, uh, be next to them, or be caressed, or some desire for physical contact. So uh, within the scope of sexuality, there is actually less, um, less scope for flexibility, for fluidity. And if you talk about fluidity, uh, the term that is better defined uh, relying on fluidity is, uh, is love, not uh, sexual desire. And she, uh, Lisa Diamond relying on some other researches, uh, research claimed that uh, we normally think that in uh, in the evolution, uh, the pair bonding, the attachment that we need for pair bond bonding appeared as the within the scope of sexuality as the sublimation of uh, sexual in instinct. So in evolution, we need uh, attachment for uh, to take care of a baby and to preserve maybe some uh, family bond uh, with a male and female. And this is how the sexual desire gets sublimated in the attachment to secure that child is taken, will be taken care of. But the, we might think of it as other way around. And there are all uh, actually research that suggests that um, the emotional pair bonding, uh, the emotions of attachment that we have that secure pair bond bonding, they appear not as a sublimation not in the context of mating, not in the context of male-female couple, uh, 
with the desire of intercourse of a male, but as a, as within the infant caregiver attachment, and then was reappropriated um, to the female bond. So this love and attachment that initially belonged to mother and child got reappropriated, accepted that the um, grown ups coupling, uh, which we call female and male, normally is acceptation. If you know what acceptation is, is um, not adaptation, but some feature that first served uh, some certain um, certain goal and then was accepted to serve different goals. So uh, in this way, acceptation is Gould's term. Uh, the theory suggests that Lisa Diamond relies on that. It was initially developed and as a part of mother-child attachment and then reappropriated to uh, male and female but here she also also shows us that um, if it's this way if you start from attachment to a child there is no uh, love doesn't know the gender right the gender is uh, is secondary and uh, it is it is defined in uh, in the culture it is um, differentiated in our culture um, on different genders, but it's a second movement because we can feel, for example, the proximity. We can feel the need to uh, to caress our if we are females to caress our female friends, uh, to uh, to hug them and to feel f attachment to them just because we are uh, because we are attached. We feel a need to to touch them, to see them, to be be near them. But it's not necessary that we are lesbians, right? If we can even sleep in one bed, we have we need we can have this feeling of uh, need to sleep in one bed, but it's not necessary mean that we, it's a sublimation of sexual desire, and it's uh, it's this is not about the gender, right? This is uh, this is not not about the gender. The gender differentiation of those people we attach to comes only as a, uh, in the second turn. So and one that something that proves it is that. This is also from uh, Lisa Diamond book that uh, she claims relying on other people research that brain systems uh, underlying love and sexual desire are actually different. They don't overlap. So sexual arousal, it, it um, includes the work of uh, androgens and estrogens and love is more about what we call love attachment and pair bonding. It's more about oxytocin uh, vasopressin, dopamine, and corticosterone. But um, mostly she concentrated on oxytocin because we now know um, quite a lot, not too much, but still a lot about it. And um, so the main, uh, one of the main uh, neurotransmitters that we, uh, that participates in uh, attachment of uh, adults is oxytocin. And initially it's needed, oxytocin is uh, especially in women. Uh, initially, it's uh, something that uh, we need for, um, for the labor, for contraction of uh, uretus, and for facilitation of milk uh, let down. So, so for breastfeeding, this participates in, uh, in, uh, in reproductive complex in, in this way, and to form attachment to, uh, to a child in mammals and in humans, including humans. Uh, it uh, secures maternal uh, feeding behavior and uh, bonding with infant and taking care of infant. And uh, because uh, now it's um, uh, because it also participates in uh, in uh, human uh, relationship of love, it uh, suggests that this relationship of love is not the sublimated sexual desire, but rather modified infant-child relationship. And so somehow it, for us, even though it's physical relationship and you need to physically take care of a child and penetrate the mouth of a child with your body, still somehow it's seen for us as platonic, as if we claim um, if it's not sexual, it's still, um, it's still like not physical, but it is physical. And for me, I, I agree with Zizek, even maybe he's very rude in this, that uh, lesbians don't have sex. Right, because um, sex is initially defined as a penetration of penis, and uh, it's not equal uh, relationship. So it's um, 
it presupposes penis and we can't call what lesbian have uh, sex even though it in it even though this physical act might include um, genitalia even though it might include the uh, um, physical proximity it's why why do we define it as sex and where is the why um, so definition of sex presupposes the um, the central role of genitalia and presupposes the orgasm and all this different structure and that that's why lesbians uh, don't have sex but even we shouldn't call them maybe uh, lesbians because lesbians is a modification of heterosexual uh, relationships so it's true um, that yeah she also claims that instead of thinking about love as being oriented so sexual desire might be oriented but uh, love is not oriented we might instead conclude that through, uh, though we are born with complex neurobiological neurobiolo circuitry that uh, prepares us from emotional bones, this program is fundament fundamentally flexible. The sphere of love is we start from this, not from the sexual desire, like we got used to and see sphere of love as a modification of it. This sphere is actually more, much more, um, much more flexible in terms of orientation towards the. Um, uh, towards the gender it doesn't know the gender or it has a different relation to uh, gender maybe it even doesn't have a gender because the gender starts if within the scope as a within the scope of sexuality and in relation to penis and the passive active role and if you start from from love uh, from the uh, love meaning attachment which is also not sublimated with, get rid of idea that it's sublimated uh, sexual desire but it's a separate important uh, event of attachment that starts and initially belongs in evolution to mother uh, child bonding and the rest of, of um, and it might include physical proximity or it might not include uh, physical proximity it might include different types of physical proximity like uh, hugs, uh, touching, uh, touching might, might include uh, genitalia. Doesn't matter what kind of genitalia uh, you have. So it, it's more flexible. It doesn't have this uh, this structure of sexuality where people are sexed into two gen opposite genders, where um, intercourse is the main event because it includes genitalia and because it presupposes orgasm. And this is how it defined well, whether you did, did have sex, whether you didn't have sex. It includes genitalia, it presupposes orgasm. And with love, is is different. It's And it's not that uh, if you get rid of uh, idea of love as um, sublimated sexual act, that it's not physical. We, we have the idea that it's not physical. It is physical. It's even much more physical than more flexibly physical than it might be physical might be not physical it might include physical proximity might not include physical proximity it might include uh, different genders it's not about uh, gender so what is real flex fluidity is uh, is love fluidity not not sexual fluidity e even though as we see the uh, diamond concept of fluidity was right away not right away but still with time a couple of years after her book was published was reappropriated as a part of sexuality and even though the man who was uh, telling us this was uh, black and gay uh, kind of the deviation but it still um, presupposes the definition of uh, there might be the way uh, there might be the 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 alternative way Daria defined the lesbians as the male main can male can claim that they are lesbians because they want to have a uh, they want to have sex with a woman and this is how they maintain initial heterosexual sphere. So even if you're gay, even if you're black, you might uh, still preserve this initial heterosexual uh, male perspective by just uh, staying within the scope of of sexuality even reducing flexibility or uh, fluidity to uh, sexuality to one of the types of sexual orientation and i think it's much more powerful if you go uh, if you go from from other direction and you reveal it from uh, from other perspective we will talk about love and all the uh, 
uh, attachment, uh, sexuality, and uh, oxytocin maybe as well next time. Uh, just I wanted to show you how the concept of uh, love fluidity and sexual fluidity can be uh, can fit here in this perspective. So um, what we try to do next time, we will try to yeah talk about uh, love as a fluid. Will uh, Lisa Diamond relies here also on uh, Bowlby, who you have to read if you want. For, for next time with his idea of attachment as basic. And actually Bowlby is, um, is someone who, uh, uh, how, someone who can overthrow, who overthrows Freud claiming that uh, attachment, mother-child attachment is not deviation from sexuality, but actually can be seen as a basic act. And maybe sexuality later development can be seen. So we all basically stay children uh, all the time. And what we want from each other, it's not to uh, have sex that much, uh, not the satisfaction of genitalia, because we can just masturbate if you didn't know uh, if you want our genitalia to be satisfied. But for what we want from each other is something different. We want this proximity, the satisfaction of attachment that uh, we are born with when we are children and that we need, that we need for our survival. So this initial mother-child bond or caregiver bond is what we try to reproduce in our lives with our friendships, with our relationships. And um, it, does, it, it, it doesn't mean that we can't have sex without feeling uh, feelings. So we can't, uh, mm, you can't have this uh, cultural phenomena that uh, is deprived of feeling. We can also do that, but this is not what we want, right? Maybe, not sure. But um, there is other need that we associate with uh, human proximity and human relationships. And uh, okay, I'll switch the recording off and I will ask you about the presentation that we're planning for today. So I know that one of the presentations is going to happen um, when on Thursday. But are we going to have any presentation today? Because I mean, tomorrow, because we can discuss those. Um, diamond works so if you have some ideas whoever want to have presentation let me know or put uh, include yourself in the list that we have okay okay so it's time for me to let you go and i see you tomorrow right during the seminar thank you Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.